Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship today. Uh, thank you for coming out in this cold weather, especially our pajama wearers. A cold day, but a wonderful day for us to come and gather and worship and hear the bedtime Christmas stories and lullabies of our Sunday school students. And you are all invited um, after services for cookies and cocoa, so please join us for that. Beautiful, beautiful combination with jammies and cold weather outside. So hope you will uh, find the warmth, uh, not only in the building, but in the beauty of this story that we love to tell and that we love to uh, enact and uh, be a part of. So thank you for coming and celebrating and worshiping with us. Just a reminder, uh, today, because of a few extra things, we'll be having communion by station. So um, the, uh, we'll, the communion assistant and I will be out front, and we'll just uh, follow through, follow the instructions of the usher. And um, we'll do uh, pre-filled communions first, and then uh, by station. All right, and then Wednesday will be uh, Christmas at Christ the King, 7 o'clock. Come early, 6 o'clock, for an Advent craft, luminaries. Be sure to bring pictures of loved ones that can, not your portraits, but photocopies of. And uh, there's a clipboard on one of the tables to sign up so we have enough supplies for everyone. And then um, Saturday evening, our uh, Christmas Eve uh, candlelight and Holy Communion will be at 5 and 7 and Christmas Day worship at 9 o'clock. If you'd like to invite anyone to worship, there are invitation cards on the little round table with the green uh, tablecloth on it. Pick one up and, and hand them out. Uh, and then this is the last Sunday for our uh, Salvation Army, um, Angel Tree, and uh, Houses to Home Tag. So uh, last chance. All right. Any other announcements? All right, then I invite you to stand and join me for our order of confession and forgiveness found on page two in your worship bulletin. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's name forever. Beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. Let us confront our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another and your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. Amen. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst, a tender branch, a living sign, by water and the Spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God of all, we are a mixed bag of distracted and forlorn, eager and anxious. We hope that you might move through the obstacle course we build up around our hearts, made out of questions and defenses, and douse us in good news. For at the end of the day, all we want is to know that we are not alone, that you are always One of the greatest gifts and challenges of faith is that we cannot be Christian alone. We need one another to grow. And we need one another to see God more clearly. Elizabeth threw open the door with joy and showered blessing upon her. How often do we leave the door locked, the curtains drawn, and the lights off? We want to see you when we see our neighbor. And in that moment, we are blessed. In that moment, we are forgiven. Let us respond together using the words from Mary's song. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. Over a hundred people, from the ages of two to eighty years old, were asked the question, What makes you feel connected? What makes you feel loved? From the voices of different generations, hear their answers. Invited in. Making music with other people. Home, home cooked food. Belly laughed. <laughs> Eye contact. Dinner parties. An inside joke. Hugs. Dancing with my partner in the kitchen. Today we light the candle of love as a reminder that from the very first generation, God has surrounded us <laughs> with love. May this good news, these threads of love, not only weave deeper connections between neighbors, but shape our actions and allow us to see God more clearly. We know that this life of connection is easier said than done which is why we gather in this space week after week, generation after generation, to be reminded. We see God, we see God each other. This gift of relationship has led us to people who lead us to God, and we are better for it. So today we want to thank God for the Elizabeths, for the people who have thrown open the door for us, <laughs> who point out God's presence in our lives, 
These people have reminded us what love looks like in a hurting world, which has pointed us back to you. So today, God, we ask for your help in opening our eyes even more. We want to see you in those whose coffee order we have memorized and in those we've never talked to. We want to see you not only in those who are family, who look like us or think like us, but in those who come from very different places and positions in life. From generation to generation, you have left your fingerprints all over creation. Hello, my friends. It's getting very dark outside and it's snowing. Looks like we're going to have a snowstorm tonight. <laughs> Looks freezing out there. I'm so glad we have a fireplace to keep us all warm. And look, kids, it's 8 p.m. That means it's time for our nighttime stories to sing our lullabies and say our prayers. We 
we are reading something very special tonight. I found this book in the church library, and I'm so excited to share it with you all. It's called Bedtime Christmas Stories and Lullabies. It's a collection of many different Bible stories about Jesus' birth and the wonderful season of Christmas. What's the best part about reading books, friends? We get to hear the story come alive. And so I want you to picture your head, the scene from what we read. Sound good? Sounds great. A reading from Luke 1, starting in the 26th verse. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this may be. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your, rel your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. The first story we are going to read is called Mary and the Angel. One night, a young girl named Mary was sleeping. <clears throat> Suddenly, a loud voice woke her up. She opened her eyes to a bright light, and she didn't know what was happening. Mary covered her face, wanting to hide from whatever was in her room. But peeking through her fingers, she saw a beautiful creature all in white. Mary was afraid and didn't know what to think. She had never seen an angel before. Maybe she wanted to cry or tell the angel to go away. Maybe she wanted to run away, but she didn't. She loved God and she was willing to do whatever God wanted her to do. God had a plan to bless Mary and he wanted to bless the whole world through her. Even though she was frightened, she chose to obey God. This story ends in a prayer that you can repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, I thank you so much for sending Jesus. Thank you for comforting Mary. When I feel afraid, you comfort me. Help me to remember that you love me and that I am special to you. Amen. And she gave birth to her firstborn, firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and laid, laid him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them.
next story we are going to read is called No Room in the Inn. Bethlehem was very crowded. Everyone in all the surrounding towns had walked or ridden their donkeys to Bethlehem to be counted. Only the first people there were able to find hotel rooms. The others had to sleep outside on the ground. Some of them may have slept in tents. Joseph wanted Mary to have a warm place to stay. He knew the baby would be born soon, and he didn't want the baby to be born in the cold, windy air. He knew how crowded it was, but he was hoping that someone would see that Mary was going to have a baby soon and make room for her. The kind innkeeper looked at Mary. He wanted to help, but all his rooms were taken. He couldn't pick out any of his customers. After all, they were there first. He didn't know what to do. Then he had an idea. He led them to where he kept his animals. It smelled of hay, and the animals made noises. stable. He made her comfortable in the hay and thanked God for taking care of his family. This story ends in a prayer that you can repeat after me. Dear God, I thank you so much for sending Jesus. I thank you so much for sending Jesus. Thank you for always taking care of us. Thank you for always taking care of us. Even when things don't go exactly as planned. Even when things don't go exactly as planned. We know you are watching over us. We know you are watching over us. Amen. Amen. Oh, look, we get to sing our first lullaby, Away in a Manger. The next story we are going to read is called The Gift in the Manger. The donkeys crunched on the hay filling the manger. Little did the animals know, later that night their feeding trough would, be ho would hold a great treasure. When Jesus was born, Mary needed a soft place to lay him. Because they were in a stable, there were no fancy cradles. She didn't want to lay him on the ground. He might get stepped on. Who would have thought that the king of kings would make his bed in a smelly old feeding trough? This proves that you cannot judge a gift by its package. After all, Jesus was God's most precious gift to the world. And God didn't choose to wrap him in any expensive sparkling package. Instead, Jesus was wrapped in simple clothes, and he slept in a manger. 
Sometimes the best gifts are the ones that come in simple packages. They may lack sparkle, but they are filled with love. These are the gifts that will last and last, even after the package can be discarded. This story ends in a prayer that you can repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God thank you for the gift of your love. Thank you for the gift of your love. Thank you for loving us so much that you sent Jesus. Thank you for loving us so much that you sent Jesus. Thank you for giving me peace. Thank you for giving me peace. Amen. Amen. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. The next story we are going to read is called A Special Night. The shepherds had never been so terrified in all of their lives. They had been coming to these fields every night for years, and nothing like this had ever happened. Bright lights, winged people in the sky, voices in the air. It was unbelievable. They were singing. It was the most beautiful music the world had ever heard. Their music filled the skies with praises to God for sending his son to earth. The shepherds watched and listened with their mouths hanging open. since they were small children, they had been taught about God's promise to their people. But could this really be true? Could God's own son, the one their parents and grandparents and great-grandparents had waited for, could really have been born this night just over those hills? The shepherds looked at one another. They wanted to know if the others had seen and heard the same thing. Some of them might have pinched themselves to see if they were dreaming. If what the angel said was true, this was a truly special night. This story ends in a prayer that you can repeat after me. Dear Father, Dear Father thank you for sending your angel, thank you for sending your angel to, tell the shepherds about Jesus. to tell the shepherds about Jesus. I want to be like that angel. I want to be like that angel. And share your good news with everyone. And share your good news with everyone. Amen. Amen. Oh, look, we also get to sing another lullaby, Oh, Holy Night.
When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The final story we are going to read is called Spreading the Word. The shepherds couldn't believe their eyes. They had searched and searched, and they had found God's son lying in a manger, just as the angel had said they would. This is one of the one they had heard stories about, the one they had waited their whole lives for. After spending a few minutes looking at the baby, they knew they couldn't keep this news to themselves. With a respectful bow, they slipped out of the stable. As soon as they were outside, they began to walk quickly. Then they began to run. stirred from their sleep. Some of them arose and went to see for themselves. Others may have pulled the covers over their heads and gone back to sleep. But no matter their response, the shepherds continued to tell everyone they met the good news. Jesus had arrived. Before we go to sleep, we are going to light our candles and sing Silent Night. A big thank you to all our Sunday School students and for all who helped in the production of our gospel message uh, telling this story. 
And as we are uh, uh, moving things around, I'd like to invite Liz front and center. <laughs> we'll have to trust that others will get will uh, will get things. You know, we we heard we just heard the beautiful story um, of a lot of people on the move. Mary and Joseph on the move, shepherds on the move, angels on the move. And this is a sad move, but Liz, our beloved director of youth and family ministry, our dear friend, is on the move as well. She and Andrew and Chloe will be moving to Gustavus Adolphus, and we wish to send them well, knowing knowing that they may be uncertain about what the future holds, but we know that God holds them. And we've seen that very evident in Liz's time with us here. Um, we have been so very gifted with her joy and enthusiasm and uh, preparedness, all her little baskets and... Um, she, uh, we fell, we've fallen in love with her, and she with us. And we, um, we pray that uh, you, and we know that God will continue to shine through you um, as you leave this place and on to a new adventure, a new place, a new home, and a new church family. So, we are very thankful, and we pray uh, for God's blessing upon you. So I invite you now to lift your hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, for you have created the wide and wonderful world in which we live. We praise you for your constant care for those you have trusted, who have trusted you in you in ages past, who journeyed in faith to new lands of promise. We trust now that you will hold Liz and Andrew and Chloe, securely in your hands as they too follow your call to a new place. May they take with them hearts filled with your love and grace, and that those with whom they live and work may see in them the face of Jesus Christ. Bless them that they may be a blessing. Guide them to a new church home where they may continue to grow in grace, in spirit, and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then at this time, I invite those who are our, our wise ones who are presenting gifts uh, for uh, Liz and her family as they, as they travel on. Another parallel besides being on the move is that when Liz came to us, she was pregnant with little Chloe, and I remember taking a meal over to her and, you know, followed her into her kitchen, and she had this tiny little table, and so I was, I asked her recently, uh, are you, are you going to keep that table, or are you going to have another table, and she said, my dream in our new house is to have a big round table about the size of those out there. So um, uh, I sent a message to the quilters and asked if anybody would be willing to make a little table centerpiece for her. And so, yes. So this is what you've all been signing. Thank you for signing.
Now I invite you to stand and join me as we confess and proclaim our faith as in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. And for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God, our shepherd, let your spirit move with power throughout the church. Give discernment and wisdom to our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Take away our fears so that we serve in love, confident that you are guiding us. God, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, our source, awaken us to the beauty of the earth and the marvelous variety of life. Unite humankind in repairing and caring for your creation. Protect creatures and habitats in peril due to the rising seas and warming temperatures. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our vision, raise up leaders in every nation who dream of freedom and justice for all people. We pray for the work of international organizations that promote peace and human rights, especially, especially Amnesty International and Compassion International. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our helper, come to the aid of all who cry out to you. Shelter migrants, refugees, and those fleeing war and famine. Bring relief to individuals and family, families experiencing hunger, homelessness, and impoverishment impoverishment. Comfort any who are isolated or lonely. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Emmanuel, you are with us in our life together. We give you thanks for gathering us in worship and fellowship, and we remember those who cannot be present. Watch over those who travel, heal the sick, and speed their recovery. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope, you bring life out of death, and you promise to be our God forever. Shine upon the faithful who now rest in the fulfillment of your promise, and bring us also into your blessed reign of peace. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. always. Share a sign of peace with one another.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you make the desert bloom and send springs of water to thirsty ground. Receive these simple gifts of bread, wine, and money, and make us messengers of your mercy and love for all in need of your healing and justice. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ you comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the host of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn God, the beginning and the end, our salvation and our hope. We praise you for creating a world of order and beauty. When we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and on this bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God who has come to save you. You may be seated and I invite those who are receiving communion using the pre-filled cups to pull those out now and to remove the seal from the wafer portion of that. And when you have that ready, if you could hold that up. This is the body of Christ given for you. And then go ahead and remove the seal from the wine or the grape juice. And when you have that ready, if you would hold that up.
This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
stand if you are able. Receive our table blessing. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the blessing you have received at his table strengthen you to live in the power of his grace, love, and forgiveness. Amen. God, in this meal you have remembered your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ. As we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. As you leave this place, may you go knowing that from generation to generation, you have been claimed and loved. From generation to generation, God has been by our side. From generation to generation, we are not alone. The God of yesterday and the God of tomorrow knows you by name, loves you, and calls you forth, saying, Go be the person you are called to be, love wildly, do justice, and come back soon. May it be so. Amen. Amen.